I was just talking earlier on about about uh, the old fish market when they because years ago they used to lay the rays and that out. Yeah. And I can remember getting twenty seven six a stone for rays. I mean twenty seven six was that one pound less than one pound fifty. Yeah. I can tell you even a better one than that, tell you the truth. I always remember when I got married, I was twenty four year old day old in here. And I was with Alan Humphreys on a boat called the Weegrass. Yeah, I remember, I remember. And Alan says to me, he says, I won't take any expenses out this week. No diesel, no nothing. He said, and everything you've, we've earned, you'll have a share out of. Uh, growing up here, well, we used to come down and all the fish would be laid out on the on the floor there at the market. I don't think health and safety would think much of that now. All the fish that was landed was just laid out on the market floor. Everybody would come and, uh, and bid at the auction. I would come down with my dad and my dad was born here and his father and his father and his father, so we were well known. And it used to take us ages just to walk the small length of the fish key because my father knew everybody and everybody would stop him and have a chat. And uh, that meant that probably uh, what would take 10 minutes now probably took about an hour and a half to, just to come down and just go along the fish market there. This port is known as the mother port of fishing because there was an awful lot of boats, the old boats, the sailing trawlers, which you see, which in Brixham you've got um, Leader, Provident, Pilgrim and Vigilance. That's the four big ones that work from here at the moment. And there are some smaller ones which come from Cornwall, um, i.e. the um, Iris and our daddy. They're Lou Luggers, which is a different class of boat. But even now, the modern equivalent has still come to Brixham to fish in the winter time. Typisch Engels toneeltje. Vissers sloepen ten anker in een kleine haven aan de Engelse kust. Een vredevol tafereeltje. Mensen die rustig aan het werk zijn. We zijn in Engeland en tevens bij de Belgen. Een Engelse haven met Belgische boten en Belgische vissers. Vluchtelingen uit oorzaak van de oorlog. Ze kwamen met vrouw en kinderen, met haven en goed, met schip en tuig. En ze zetten zich hier onmiddellijk aan hetzelfde stoere en moeilijke werk aan de visserij. As well in the war when the Belgian fishermen came to Brixham because they were obviously getting away from the German influx and a lot of them came here and, and I remember as a boy going down the harbour and taking bread down and they would give you cigarettes and lighters and all sorts of things so you would do a banter then and swap things over and, and there was quite a lot of Belgian families that actually came and lived here. I can, yes. Oh, in the I, family. I've got Belgians married into the family, definitely. I can remember them coming because yeah. they came from Ostend. And I can remember, again, looking down on them. And they were gunning, hardly, hardly buoyant. They have so much. Well, they put all their furniture, everything yeah. was on the boat. And also they brought neighbours and friends. Yeah. And when they came ashore, they just went anywhere, anywhere that, that was no. empty. We had them living all around us. Yes. I, and they, when any, and, Anybody had a room, yeah. they, they'd give it to one of the Belgian yeah. families. And really. of course, um, I can remember them, there was one a house opposite the house that was empty, so they went in there. And they didn't, they had hardly anything. And I can remember mum and her neighbours, and, and it was all over Brixham, people were giving them blankets. They didn't have much themselves, but they, they got together and they, they managed to get them something. Town of Brixham, it's all ups and downs. Higher Street and Fall Street in this little town. But we all wait for the trawlers when they come home from sea. For there's nothing like a trawler or a trawlerman for me. 
The girls of Little Brixham, they dress very neat. Gold rings upon their fingers, kid shoes on their feet. They all wait for the trawlers when they come home from sea. For there's nothing like a trawler or a trawlerman for me. But whether you go with the boats to sea or stay on dry land watching or working, fishing is everyone's business in Brixham, especially working. Keeping fish fresh is just one job, and for craft that lack refrigeration plant, ice is taken aboard before every trip. One trawler may expect to bring back over seven tons of fish, and that means a lot of ice to keep every boat at sea. My wife's grandfather uh, was um, co-opted to come down from Dursley in Gloucestershire and Mr. Clyburn and he came down and opened the Brixham's first ice factory which was established in King Street. Well the Americans <laughs> can't live without cold beer so they used to they used to go into the um, ice factory and ask for a block of ice. Well, the, before it was crushed, it came up well, in huge, huge great blocks. blocks. Yeah, I still remember and seeing And it was put in a sack and a, with a, uh, um, and a, an American soldier and taken out to the hard where they were getting ready for D-Day. But my father-in-law said to my husband, you've got to go with him because you've got to bring the sack back. The sack was more important than then the black. Then the yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause Cause it, yeah. And when he came back with the sack, there was butter and there were sweets and there was quite a lot of nice things in this sack, which yeah. was, they were very kind, the Americans Oh, they were. always had the chewing gum. And they and gave us loads of sweets yeah. when they came. They used to throw them to us. <coughs> and I took a job on a, a local boat, so I was on the Joanna Sea, which was Bruce Cook's boat. Oh, Cookie, yeah. And then uh, uh, I fouled out with really. him, and uh, then uh, I went with Jim Moore. And that was a that was an experience. Oh, Jim used to take his glass eye out in the pubs and nobody drink his drink. Yeah, stick it in his drink. Stick it in his yeah. drink when he went taller, so yeah. nobody drink his drink. Yeah. I was keeping an eye on his beer. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I was in the old uh, <laughs> rising sun, wasn't it? I don't know. I never used to go in the pubs yeah. very much. So Torbay Lifeboat Station, uh, founded and opened on the 3rd of October um, 1866 um, and that was due to a, an incident in Brixham that happened earlier that year in January when a, a great storm uh, uh, happened and all the local fishing boats um, were, were lost and caught in a, in a really bad gale in hurricane winds and there was a lot of boats lost and um, a lot of lives lost in Brixham and there was no lifeboat at the time um, so they, um, the nearest lifeboat was at Torquay and at Timmouth and the Torquay boat um, struggled to get out due to the weather and the Timmouth boat was brought over by um, land and launched in Torquay and because of the great loss of life which was around about the figures are, are debatable, but it was around 60 lives were lost. Um, that they, um, the people of Exeter, decided to raise the money to pay for a local boat to be in Brixham. And later that year, or first boat come, which was called the City of Exeter, which was a, a rowing lifeboat um, with uh, 13 oarsmen, um, sorry, 12 oarsmen and one coxswain and a bowman and that was uh, a cost of 300 pounds. Monday 
Monday morning in the month of May. One Monday morning in the month of May. I thought I heard Woo. the old man say, The Rosabella will sail today. I'm going on board the Rosabella. I'm going on board the Rosabella. I'm going on board right down to four. The saucy Rosabella. <laughs> well, you're talking about that. The first time I ever remember being bloody seasick. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. I was on the Iago. And we oh, that's one of the tour by trawlers. Yeah, so. one of the ten day boats. Yeah, ninety footer. And uh, when I ran the end of Bury Head there, and I felt ill, and Tom was going to star, I was ill. And there was old Jim Thompson. Yeah. Was uh, made a, a boatswain on board, and he says to me, he said, "Get it up, boy. You'll feel better." Anyway, I'm being sick, one thing another grub come up, and then the next thing he says, Get it down, he boy, you'll feel better. I said, 15 year old, or what's not, I wish you'd make your bloody mind up. <laughs> I was, I was sick the, um, the year war broke out, and the week it broke out, but in about 1938, we were watching Brixham Regatta because they lived in Sunbury Terrace and we had a, a commanding view of the whole bay and we could see the, see the racing and everybody came to watch it. You had relatives from everywhere that came and they used to buy a big ham, regatta ham, which they ordered like we ordered, much like we order a turkey for Christmas. Oh yeah. And the house was cleaned and all the relatives <laughs> came from cow town and, and, and everything. And my mother stood me on the wall and she said to me, I should be forever indebted to her because I don't think I would ever have remembered it. And she said to me, look at all these boats sailing, look at all the red sails, because you won't see it again. Fisherman John stared at the moon, he'd always danced to a different tune, and people said, John, you ought to conform, not live your life like a ship in a storm. You're floating like jetsam out on the brine. One day soon, you will run out of time. Fiddler's Green will be calling to you. He gave a wry smile and said, yes, it's true. For songs and stories of me will be told And if I die young, I won't have to grow old Live in the moment is my only creed Don't waste your time on the things you don't need Now Fisherman John is resting Far away from his harbour and home He's gone over the bar with the last evening star But his love and his laughter live on He's up at the helm and steering The east wind will ruffle his hair As we say our goodbyes he'll be sailing the skies And the boatman will offer a prayer 